evening and welcome to Information Please, your Peoria Public Library on the air, bringing you information about your library and your community. And this evening my guest is Kristen McKenzie from the Riverfront Museum. Hi. Hi, Tricia. So glad you came back. Thank you. Because you've just continued to add things and there's so much going on and now we're past the holidays so I imagine a lot of people have been to see but those who haven't yet this is the time. Right, and today I want to talk about our, ch our special feature exhibit, which is up through March 3rd. So okay. if you've missed it, there is still time. Still time or to get there. Or just come again. Yeah. Come again and again. It is one of those exhibits that you will see something new each time you visit. Mm -hmm. And as you say, um, we are, um, every, things are changing all over the museum, week yeah. by week, little bit like, little bit. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the point, though, is yes. to always I always have something different to we see. We want to keep it fresh. We want to keep things that you can, um, some things don't change as we've talked before. The River right. Gallery pretty much doesn't change and the um, IHSA little bits will change out. That's the high school, the peak performance area. Mm -hmm. And then in the, uh, the street gallery, the history gallery, that pretty s much stays the same for a period of time and then we'll be changing it mm -hmm. next year. Um, but the special feature gallery does change, so. Neat. The, well, sure, go ahead and pull up the, next, uh, the first pull, image. Pull up, pull up an image the, so we can see. The exhibit is called Chow and Friends Invitational. That's capital C-I-A-O, which is standing for Central Illinois Artists Organization. Yes, they're a wonderful group. They are, and a growing group. Um, Central, so um, it's a group of artists and different media working together. And they are the ones who started the first Fridays, um, where the first Friday of the month, a lot of artists have their gallery open mm -hmm. and it's just um, a social time to to go from gallery to gallery to see friends to enjoy the wonderful art some of them will have refreshments out for you um, a great way to um, sort of relax mm -hmm. and unwind at the end of the week and get a little culture yeah. and so um, two of the founding members of Chow Doug and Eileen Loinig mm -hmm. guest curated this exhibit for us and that's kind of where the name came from and it is an exhibit of artworks in various media by artists from the Tri-County area, Peoria, Woodford, Tazewell. So they're all local artists, all currently working. Um, we had people who tried to submit work made 100 years ago, 50 years ago, but it's all very much about now, um, very much about what's going on and the creativity in our area right now. We wanted to do this as we um, moved downtown and opened the new museum, moved from Lakeview Museum to the Peoria Riverfront Museum, um, joining this rich, vibrant area for the arts. So many of the artist studios are in what they're calling, I guess, the Riverfront District. Right. Um, a little further down Water Street towards the post office, but all along there, um, a lot of artists who are very active and, and really trying to support public enjoyment of the art and, mm -hmm. and support of the art through making purchases and stuff. So mm -hmm. I brought a few images today. There are 75 works in the exhibit. Wonderful. Um, and we'll talk about the few I brought. This is Shannon Alleg, who um, is a local artist, lives in Washington, D.C., of course. She works in multimedia, and I don't know that you can really tell on the s screen here, but it's a very three-dimensional uh, work. Um, and she is, it's abstract. She considers herself an abstract expressionist, so she's interested in the bottom part. You can kind of see that sort of the sense of emotion and the process of, of, of making a mark on the, on the canvas is how you might talk about it. But she's incorporated found objects and saved objects, and so kind of anything around her is, is fair game to end yeah. up in her work. Very elegant work. It's a large work, um, very elegant. Um, but very sort of organic and crusty and um, industrial at the same time. Um, I actually used it, we did an invitation, we had a reception for all the artists and their families mm -hmm. when the exhibit opened and used this on the invitation to that. It's, it's a very, very powerful nice. piece. It is. Um, so, and she says in talking about, you know, where does her inspiration come, she talks about it coming from her dreams. Now here's a very different kind of work, and I wanted to be sure we do have photographs in it, um, okay. in the exhibit. Sometimes people don't expect photo photography in right. fine arts exhibits, and I do. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think that's very important. Um, one of the things that I want people to understand about this exhibit is what an opportunity it was for professional established artists as well as 
sort of the more um, private artist or not or less mainstream as well as emerging artists. This exhibit was open to anyone in the Tri-County area who wanted to submit a work. Mm -hmm. And there was a committee of people who made the selections then. And we didn't know who the artists were. Sometimes people are very distinctive and you know. But um, So we ended up with a lot of artists. This is David Benko, Benko excuse me, and he does not um, earn his living day by day making art. He works at uh, Richwood High School. Um, he's in maintenance there, and wow. this is after 20 years working as a meat cutter. Wow. And he actually came to art just within the last um, 10 years, I guess, took a course at ICC in photography and loved it. Mm -hmm. And he became passionate about it. So he's obviously very, very good. I mean, oh, this yes. is a piece that I find just amazing. And clearly his idea of a moment frozen in time, of how yeah. you can do that with photography, get the clarity, but stopping so, something that has a narrative to it. Yes. And he's really interested in those narratives as well. Um, he's interested in music and in lyrics. And I think, I think you can kind of got to get a little touch of that there. So yeah, they look like dancers. Almost. He's one of those artists who um, you don't think of when you think of Illinois, mid Central Illinois artists, mm -hmm. because he's not perhaps as well known as some of the others who maybe are teaching art, um, have their own studios that are open on a regular basis, but um, really, really high quality and and deserving to be shown to a wider public. Yeah, so. it's beautiful. I like it. Beautiful. What's our next? Did he take that locally? Do you know? Um, you know, that I actually don't know. Um, there's a lot I don't know about some of these works. So <laughs> so I don't know. It doesn't look to me like he did, but I don't know. Now, yeah, here's a, a lot of places in Peoria people aren't familiar with. True, true. Yeah. Now, this one is local. This is Rick Buschulte, and he's a well-established local artist, always been in the Midwest, um, and... I hope, I have always, in this almost 17 years that I've known his work, always see, felt a great calm in his work, a great serenity. Mm -hmm. And um, his one of his major tenets in life is being quiet and responding to the world around it, sort of listening to the mm -hmm. world. And he talks about finding inspiration as he's driving his car in the countryside. Yeah. And he does focus on these wonderful Midwestern landscapes. Very often um, an interesting time of day in terms of what the light is doing. Mm -hmm. So sunset or pre-dawn or that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, and really captures them so beautifully. Is this what? Is this a photograph, a painting? It's a uh, painting. It's a painting. He does um, he does paintings and I believe pastels, mm. um, but painting. He's a painter, um, and he really does want us to kind of slow down and notice the world around us and find the beauty in the world around us. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's kind of you know it's cornfield near barn and, so and a green you know, elevator. Grain elevator. Yeah. But um, it's just so stunningly beautiful. Um, he does, um, he, as he said, he works regularly as an artist. Um, he has another daytime job, I believe, but he has been showing um, throughout this region for 20 or more years. So again, it's a more stunning. established Is this artist. a larger piece? Or? Um, it's kind of mid-size, and that's okay. actually a good point. The, the exhibit is wonderful, too, and not only the range of media, but we're getting a sense of the range of subject matter and yeah. also the range of size. There are some very large works and some very, very small works. And it's just always hard to tell when we're seeing it on a screen it and is. they're all showing the sign. It is, and you and lose any sense of the texture and the finish of the work yeah. itself. So. And so while we get a little glimpse, I think people aren't going to appreciate or understand these works fully until, they, until come. they go see them and for themselves. And again, to think that all of this art is here. Mm -hmm. Even those of us who were involved in putting the show together know how, with um, things like Bradley University's art department, ICC's right. art department, so many artists who are graduating from those programs are staying here and finding work. Many of them are showing in Chicago or other cities, but they find this is a good inexpensive place to live mm -hmm. um, we're trying to build the support in the community as I said but so we knew that there were a lot of artists but this working on this exhibit really showed us how many there are works in this show by 
um, individuals who are still studying, who are still at Bradley mm. University, still in college. That's wonderful. And clearly they're, they have a good career ahead of them. And this is an amazing opportunity for them to be showing alongside established, internationally known artists as well. Oh, yeah. So, Wonderful. moving Very on, okay. um, to, this is a ceramic work, um, Bamboo Forest. This is Grace Chen, who is, um, she, she I, I should say obviously, um, she does blend Eastern and European, and Western sensibilities. She herself is from the East. Um, from Asia and lives here in Peoria, um, works in ceramics, which is a difficult medium in the sense that you don't have total control over it. You can create your piece, you can put your glaze on it, but then you put it in the kiln and you fire <laughs> you don't it. don't know exactly now, what will happen. Obviously, with time and experience, the artist does learn what to expect mm -hmm. and that, you know, trial and error, and they have a really good idea. But something could happen. Uh, for mm. instance, what if your electricity goes off in the middle of the firing at your home, if that's where your studio is, exactly. and then something different happens. This also is a very large piece. The, um, this is, you, I can get a sense of that in the corner of a room. It's a very yeah. tall, well, you can, very tall piece. Yeah, I can see the electrical outlet, which oddly enough gives it some, exactly, exactly. Some, a little bit of scale. And um, she has done them in components and then put them together. But nonetheless, anytime you're looking at that scale, you're increasing the risk of something going wrong, of something collapsing, something not working. Um, I wouldn't like to be responsible for moving well, it either. Well, we weren't. She, Grace, kindly enough, and her husband and another friend did move it. And um, they're very heavy. It's not, it's not, there's several pieces to the base. The base comes apart so with take pieces it on it. But nonetheless, they're very heavy. And um, moving it was not easy. And it took, I believe, about four hours to get everything from home, she doesn't live close to the museum, but from her home to the museum and then install it. Um, and we did have a few issues with some of the um, junctures coming apart, but oh dear. it's her. It's very characteristic of her work. She does love bamboo. She has a very strong Asian aesthetic. Mm -hmm. um, again, very calming. Um, her glazes are beautiful. Um, her bamboo is very realistic. She makes um, I think this is the only floor piece I know about, but wall pieces and then tabletop pieces as well. And um, often uses bamboo as a theme. Yes, yeah. So bamboo um, uh, vases or bamboo wall mm -hmm. sconces, sort of thing. Um, That's the other thing is is artists who work in ceramics. A lot of times, people think they're making pots or they're making right. Cups and her or place. She and, has functional pieces, mm -hmm. but they really stand on their own. I, I as you can tell, it's qu I'm quite taken by her work mm -hmm. and find it very lyrical and very strong and powerful mm -hmm. in a very calm, gentle way. Um, and and she, it, her her process, I think, for her is also very zen and and, and yeah. very precise, but beautiful and and restorative. Yeah, yeah, very, so, very. There's, we seem to be going with a the theme of calm here well, too. Well, <laughs> we are in a way. And our next piece, I think, okay. is a little, a lot more energetic. This is okay. an artist named Cindy Merrill. Oh, this yes. hangs from the ceiling. Very it's different. It's quite large. Now she works in wood and metal, but ceramic is one of her passions. Mm -hmm. And those tendrily, spirally, spiky things are all ceramic. This is a very heavy piece. Again, this is something that we um, we have a lot of experience at the museum but we needed her advice on how to hang this and all. Um, and art for her is very therapeutic. Um, she actually um, really, she's always been creative, but um, other things in her life got in the way of being mm -hmm. an artist until um, a number of years ago, um, I think within the last 15 years. And um, she signed up for an art class at ICC and um, it was a life-changing experience, again, learning about s sculpture and uh, ceramics in particular. Mm. Um, and so it's very therapeutic for her, but she does a one, these grand pieces. She wa they're, they're humorous, too. Um, yeah. And she wants you to, again, be surprised. And kids are enjoying this because it does hang from up high, and so you're looking at it from underneath. And it's hard to tell what it is. Yeah. And, and what it means. Um, so she's, again, it's sort of a moment frozen in time, but the idea of movement and energy yeah. is definitely there. And I bet kids do love that. They do. It's a surprise. Yeah. So <laughs> our next okay. work um, is one of our very established artists. This is marble and metal as well. The, um, 
the grid thing in the middle there, the greenish part, is, is metal, and then um, metal below, and then a, a marble, Italian marble, sort of an egg form. Wow. It's called perspective, and it's about looking through it and what you see through it and what you see within it and, and the shapes you see as well. This is Fisher Stoles, who has oh. a national rep reputation, mm -hmm. um, receives commissions, large commissions on a regular basis, does a lot of very large-scale outdoor works. Mm -hmm. He's, he teaches at Bradley right. University. Um, if you've had a chance to visit the Harrison um, Center, the birth through eighth grade Harrison School, he did a work that's at their front entrance and there's another um, sister work inside where he had actual children make their impressions of their hand and then he cast those and that's in the work there. Um, but very important artist, um, he's actually very involved with the museum as well. And this is one of those where you're an emerging artist and here, or a, or a, um, a more casual artist, mm -hmm. you know, you and I might be, right. and showing right next to this very important internationally known artist. Well, there are several in the, Preston Jackson is in the exhibit, um, Ken Hoffman, who used to teach at Bradley, his wife Barbara Hoffman, um, quite a number of other, Hiram Torreson in Glass, who's well known. See, I, th I think that people hear these names and they see these people, and you know, you can go to their studio on a first Friday or they see them in the news, articles are written about them. We, we had some of these artists at the library yes. a while back and they don't realize you know, how highly regarded they are They elsewhere. are. They're living here in Peoria. They've chosen to live here in Peoria. Preston Jackson, for instance, has lived here but taught at the Art Institute of Chicago and commuted back and forth. Um, yeah. But they choose to be here and um, we're excited to be able to bring their work together here. I have um, one more art to, artist to show you before we run okay. out of time, if we're ready to move on. Okay. Um, this is an artist who probably is not, oh, I'm sorry, two more. This Good. is Linda Verkler. Um, okay. Again, it was fun at the opening. Um, I guess she doesn't show uh, regularly in, here in Peoria, and a lot of her neighbors and friends came in and made a beeline. Oh, wanted to see. see. Work. This is a large work, very interesting work, um, very much a, um, a narrative there, a personal narrative. She didn't talk a lot about it. A lot to see and find out, sort of personal images of her life and her experiences that she shared with us. Very loose technique. Um, yeah different than anything else we've looked at. And again, I wanted you to see the, the range of, of art styles we have. It is amazing. And any explanation for what any I, of these things I are? I really don't know. She, in, um, in the exhibit, um, with each work, there's a label identifying the artist and the title of the work. And then this time we put up artist statements. So sometimes oh, the statement is about the work itself mm -hmm. and sometimes it's more general about their approach to art or what art means to them in their lifetime. Um, she, she was not verbose. <laughs> Her words were limited. So I think that it's very personal and um, something that she's sharing with us but allowing us to find our own meaning in it. In it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And then one more. This okay. is a last sculpture. This is Pat Whalen Keck, Patricia Whalen Keck, who actually mm -hmm. is on, on the staff at Peoria Riverfront Museum and used to teach at ICC. Um, again, very, it's an amazing work, relatively large figures, and it harks back in part to her memories of growing up and visiting her grandmother's house and um, visiting with her grandmother while they did the dishes after a meal, and her grandmother had pet birds. Ah, okay. And so the birds kind of stayed with her, but now she's put them on human legs. Um, very powerful works, very sophisticated. Um, Pat does not um, have a gallery representation. She um, makes her art for herself, um, but I, I thought it would surprise people. There's a bit of surrealism to the, yes. the works. So very much an inner voice, an inner view of the world um, that I wanted to share. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, when I see this, I have to see it for myself. But when I see this, I'm not sure if it's a scary thing or a happy thing. Or I agree with you. Know. you. I <clears throat> agree with you. I think I think you'll <laughs> discover that they're elegant, 
And I think that you might think it's a little scary at first, and then I think you will yeah, when get to know them. I think you'll, you'll and sort And they of, have personality. They do have and personalities. So I only brought the one view, but you do have to walk around and see all views and of see. it. And that's the, the thing with all of them. I wanted to show two things. We did a catalog oh, of the wonderful. exhibit. Oh, wonderful. I was going to ask. And um, this is actually Barb Hoffman's image on the front. And so each work is illustrated. Oh, how nice. And, with the, and again, we have the artist statement in here. Mm -hmm. And some of the artist statements were a little long to put on the on the gallery label, but they're in here completely. Um, Chris Tobin did the design for this, and it's just beautiful. Um, so it's a way to take the exhibit home with you. To keep well, it. and here's a good question. Now that we have this lovely new museum with catalogs on exhibits, I'm wondering if we're going to have to get those cataloged into the library collection well, and local history. Um, I almost brought you one. I wasn't uh, sure, but I'll, I'll send this one home with you then, if well, you'd then, like. Then that means that, that people will, be, will catalog it and put it in local history, and people will be able to come into the library and see it for themselves long exactly. after this exhibit is... Is it's gone done. and the catalog's not Ca available. Their catalogs are a wonderful um, way to preserve mm -hmm. an exhibit for a long time. When we put out the invitation, when Doug and, and Eileen Loinick put out the invitation for people to submit work for this exhibit, um, almost 300 artists submitted works and they could submit up to three works each. So we had 500 works submitted. Yeah. And we were all impressed with overall quality and how many works well, we only had space I mean even as it is we we um, have a, a not a dense installation but we, we took as many as we could for the space we have and it's a very large space much larger than we had before at the other museum um, the Prairie Center for the Arts was kind enough to step up at that point and say you know there is so much other good art here and so many artists that deserve to be shown they did an exhibit that oh, ran um, through October into the first week of November and included every artist in our show plus every artist who did not get included into the show at the Riverfront Museum. That's wonderful. And Sharon and John Amdahl, both retired from Caterpillar, both mm -hmm. art collectors particularly interested in contemporary art, um, paid for another publication oh, that was wonderful. produced by, sponsored by Arts Partners of Central Illinois. Mm -hmm. And I want to show it too because this is available for purchase at the Peary River Museum as well as our catalog, um, Prairie Center for the Arts, um, all around town. There's a lot of places where you can find this to buy. And what they did, you can see on the cover, this is a photograph of each of the artists. Mm included in their exhibit who participated in this process. October was um, National Humanities, Art and Humanities Month, so this was up through all of October and came out in time for that. And inside here we have, again, a photograph of each artist. Um, one of their works of art, these, who was the David Bento oh, yes. again, mm -hmm. this is another exhibit, that, uh, a work that is in our show, and then they were interviewed, each artist was interviewed. And different questions for each one, so it's really great fun. So an image of their work, photograph of the artist, and then some commentary by them. Um, and Claire that Howard, Claire Howard, who's been with the Peer Journal Star right. and interested in the arts, um, she did all the interviews. This nice. is a treasury. Well, this is a treasury, and it's something that every community should do. And I, I can't believe we didn't think to do it sooner. Yeah. Um, and this, again, has a life far beyond either exhibit at the Prairie Arts mm -hmm. Center or at the Riverfront Museum mm -hmm. because it's kind of like a directory and definitely a celebration of the creativity. Um, there's people in here who you might consider more of a housewife or, you know, somebody yeah. who, but who has the talent but isn't pursuing it actively right now yeah. but heard about this opportunity. Um, and so here's just this great reference on the artistic tradition. Well, and it's so important to document these yes. things because I know I fight, you know, constantly with works of art we have at Peoria Public Library that were donated to us a hundred years ago and we don't know anything about them. We don't know who did right. them. We don't, you know, and how wonderful to have this kind of documentation. It because is. Because obviously these pieces are going to live, yes. outlive their creators. That's true. You That's know, true. And, so. and how wonderful to be able to go back and, and hear from them mm -hmm. and hear what they've done. And so there's very been, exciting. Um, both of these have been, I think, a tremendous boost for the local art community. 
Um, not you know the the ex title of the exhibit is Chow and Friends mm -hmm. because some of the members are Chow members. Most of are them not. are not. And actually, you can look up in the very back. We have a page that these are the Chow artists who oh, are included okay. in here. Mm -hmm. So out of seventy five, it's about eighteen who are members. I suspect some more of these We're artists will join <laughs> Chow because it is a good. Um, the good it's a very organization. vital organization. Right. I had the privilege of working with some of the people who, who founded it and had the early on uh -huh. First Fridays and you will not meet a more energetic, creative and bunch of people. And committed group. They really committed. are. They want to make it happen. Many of them are, are involved with Arts Partners as well as am I. I'm on the board of Arts Partners and of course we're trying to do everything we can to make this the mm -hmm. most supportive community for the artists and, and make artists life easier and it just expand yeah. the role of art in yeah. our community. Not have starving artists and garrets, but right. appreciate them. Working with them businesses, working with other organizations, finding mm -hmm. any opportunity we can, bringing national attention to our community. So mm -hmm. a lot going on. Yeah. Again, Chow and Friends is up through March 3rd, okay. Sunday, March 3rd, so there's plenty of time to come visit. Um, regular tickets to visit are $11 for adults, 10 for seniors, and 9 for students. There is a 15% discount if you live in Peoria County and bring proof of that. Ah, oh, okay. Like a driver's license? Driver's license, checkbook. Uh -huh. Yeah, anything like that. That's Official right. mail. That, there you go. <laughs> Thank Wonderful. you for letting me promote. Yeah. And I want to know, people may want to know this. Say they want to just run in and buy this. You can do that. Do you have that? to pay museum admission? No. The store is off. It's in our free zone. Okay. Off, just off of the lobby. Come in and shop anytime you want. Okay. Um, parking. Um, we have underground parking in our structure mm -hmm. and at the museum. It is pay parking. There's pay parking along Water Street, other parking on the other side of the railroad tracks, and plenty of parking structures, um, Washington and beyond. So you can just park and run in? Right. And you right. don't have to pay a Well, um, if you pay, to no, if you, um, there's different ways to work it out. <laughs> yeah, to, to get to the store. Right. We don't have any, if you're, if you're just running in for a moment, you could, you could risk just stopping in the front with your flashers on or washing it. We have a bus. No, I'm, I'm talking about physically but, going in to get to the, the store. But the store, right, you don't, need to, you don't need to pay admission to come to the store. We have a lot of holiday merchandise. We have a lot of art. We have jewelry. We have other books. Yeah. Um, lots of scientific Well, this is not too long until Valentine's Day, so... That may be a good oh, yes. thing to yes. consider yes. for Valentine's there will be. Day. Yes. How romantic to get artwork for Valentine's yes. Day. And great. actually, if I have another moment, many of the artworks in the Child and Friends exhibit are for sale. Okay. And the store has information and just work through me. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll see you next week on Information, Please. <laughs>